Hi, my name is Ronald Prussing. I've been the principal trombone of the Sydney Symphony Orchestra since 1980, and I started casual playing with the Sydney Symphony Orchestra in 1970 while I was still at high school, so it's been over 50 years playing regularly with the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. I was at high school in year 12, uh, called year six in those days, and uh, I had my trombone at school, and the headmistress, Betsy Brown, came in and said, Prussing, they need a trombone player up at the Sydney Symphony Orchestra this afternoon for the afternoon's rehearsal was Moshe Atzman conducting and the second trombone had gone home with a mouth full of coal sores. And uh, so I went up in my school uniform and played second trombone in Romeo and Juliet, the Overture of Tchaikovsky for the first time in the SSO. I know that um, I walked in in my school uniform, I knocked over the music stand of the then bass trombonist um, and he's never forgotten it. And, uh, you know, and I was enjoying myself immensely. You know, so uh, it, it was a bit, a bit of both. You know, I was intensely concentrating on trying to do a good job, uh, but also very excited to have the opportunity. In 73, again, because they only had three permanent members of the trombone section in the orchestra at the time, then the repertoire for that first concert was um, uh, a whole Wagner night, and the second half of the concert was from the Ring Cycle, partic uh, particularly Goethe Dameron, and uh, so they needed a fourth trombone, so I, I got the, the nod uh, in that concert. It, it, it was spectacular. I mean, uh, you know, there were so many political uh, machinations that went on over the building of that building and, you know, the firing of Jan Utzen and, you know, the, the, the blowout of the budget and all this sort of stuff and uh, everybody was blaming everybody else. But uh, as the building went on, we suddenly had this magnificent edifice that now has become an iconic building of, uh, of architecture, for, uh, for one thing, of the 20th century. Um, most probably the finest piece of 20th century architecture that you, you'll see anywhere in the world. And it, it galvanised the, uh, the population, I think, in the city because they realised that we did have something of true value and worth. The anticipation of the ABC, uh, as, as it was at the time, we were employed by the ABC at the time, uh, for the ABC to become the uh, biggest hire of the hall and for us to be in this iconic building. And um, it, was, it was really quite, quite something, you know, there, there was a real excitement in the air, anticipation of all the players, as I recall. I've completed uh, 43 years in the orchestra, so there have been many, many highlights. You know, concerts that you just walk off the stage, you're, you're almost floating off the stage saying, gee, that went well. Wasn't that marvellous? Didn't the audience pick up the vibe of, of what we tried to give them, you know? I remember uh, when I was first in the orchestra, Louis Frameau was the chief conductor. And uh, we did uh, a live broadcast from the Opera House on a Sunday evening, but it was live broadcast to the European Broadcasting Union, and he did the organ symphony of Saint-Saëns. And it was just one of those performances that just simply went. It sailed. Of course, you had Van Otteloo, who did marvellous concerts, um, uh, particularly some of the Beethoven cycle that he was recording. He did a wonderful Mahler VI. Um, he did Brook the Six and um, Heldenleben on the 74 tour. And that was, they, they were memorable performances, both on tour and both in Australia before we went as well. I think of the marvellous Brook the Seven that we did with uh, Lauren Mazel and the Marla Five that we did, the first concert that he, he did with us, and an Alpine symphony with uh, Edo Devart. We, we took Alpine Symphony, would you believe, we toured Alpine Symphony right through Europe. A massive symphony, you know. And, um, but the, the, the concert before we left was just electric. And, uh, we, you know, we were standing on the stage receiving the applause of the audience and some guy just jumped up on the stage and said, this orchestra is better than that. More applause, you know. <laughs> it, was, it was really quite, quite astounding. Every so often, there'll be that performance that just 
sticks in your mind that, that just feels so right, you know? Gunter Herbig doing uh, Bruckner 8. Um, Stuart Challender doing Bruckner 8 uh, at the beginning. Of it. It, it was an astounding performance. A Shostakovich 11 with Lazarev conducting. Now, and, and a Shostakovich 9 with Lazarev conducting, which was put out on CD and is one of the best recordings that the orchestra have ever made. Yes, I think there's been a great development and unifying force from Simone. Um, she's had wonderful experience in, in Hamburg. You know, she's heard those players and those singers. And so, you know, she's got a concept of the sound that she wants to hear. And that's transferring to us in that she's now got this new concert hall as well. And she sees that as another instrument for which, uh, w with which she can play. And so um, I, I think it's, yeah, it's transforming uh, the sound of the orchestra. I think there's um, a progressively a, a better blend, uh, better listening, uh, more colors, uh, which I, I attribute to the hall and making our job easy, you know, to both listen and, and to play in. And so I think, uh, you know, I think the future's bright with our association with Simone. And uh, she will uh, bring our, uh, bring more unity, uh, more ensemble, more colours to the orchestra. And I think that's a very exciting time for us.